and welcome to this video. I want to go over an example of global variables, how to use them, how to uh, start using them if you've never used them before, and how global variables can actually help you in the design process. And indeed, they can save a lot of time and effort. So let's say I have a sieve right here, and, and uh, I'm particularly concerned with the area of each hole. Let's say that no matter what I do, I want to have a consistent area of all the holes added together. So in this case, every hole on this sieve adds up to a total area of 2.62 square inches. And if I change the diameter of this hole, I have to change my number of holes so that they all add up again to 2.62 square inches. Well, that can be a lot of math by hand, and that can really complicate or make a design process difficult if something has to change. But with global variables, this is made very easy. I can access my global variables by right-clicking here and saying Manage Equations. If this does not show up in your history tree, I'll show you later how to get that to show up. So I've specified a needed volume of 2.62 square inches. Every hole has an area that adds up to 2.62 inches squared. If I change my hole diameter from 0.125 to 0.25, I'm going to need less holes to satisfy that requirement of 2.62 square inches. And thankfully, I've set up my sheet and part correctly so that I simply hit enter, and my um, part automatically updates to the number of holes needed to satisfy 2.62 square inches. Likewise, I can manage equations again, and I can change my material thickness from 0 0.0625 to 0.1 inches, and you'll see after I rebuild, my material becomes more thick. So I can change my needed volume to something like three, squared in, three inches squared, and notice my number of holes increases to satisfy that parameter. So there, there's a number of things that I can do uh, that will be very beneficial in speeding up a design process. So now that you've seen kind of what global variables are capable of and how much power you can have with them, let's go through how to make a model that self-updates like this. So let's rebuild this model uh, together so you can follow along. I'm going to start a new part. And uh, I'm going to start by sketching on the top plane. And I'll sketch an oval, or SolidWorks calls this an ellipse, which is more accurate. And I'll give this a dimension of 6, point, 6 by 4. If you watched my brush video, you'll probably uh, be quite familiar with this beginning part. And then I can make this vertical to my origin. And I'm fully constrained. So I'll rebuild, and I'll grab my right plane. I'll control 8 so that I'm normal to it. Sketch and grab a three-point arc. and make sure that I'm coincident on that point. There we go, and I'm co not coincident over here, so I'll make myself coincident. There, now I just have to add a radius to fully constrain. We'll give that a radius of four inches. Now I'll grab my other plane, my front plane, and sketch on that with a three-point arc. Make sure that I'm coincident to these points. I can select the midpoint of my arc and pierce this other arc. Now we're fully constrained, so we have this. I can add a surface here. I'll choose a filled surface. I'll choose this as my boundary that I'll fill in, and these as constraint curves. Now that I'm constrained on those, I have a surface. I will thicken this surface, and actually, this is at the point where I want to add global variables, and notice my equations are not here. So if I want to start getting ready to add global variables, I can uh, come to Tools and select Equations here. And now on this equations chart, I can add a variable. I want to add what thickness do I want to make my material. And I'll make this 0 0.0625. And, uh, and then I hit enter. It looks like I can't add a variable called thickness, so I'll call it thick at 0 0.0625. Some names are limited in here, and uh, that'll be my material thickness. Notice it tells me what the answer is over here. I can add a comment if I want to. And uh, now I've got a global 
variable. So I'll hit OK. Now how do I use this global variable? Well, I'll choose the um, thicken command and choose what parameter to thicken. And I can't add a global variable here, so I'll just make it 0 0.01, let's say. So I've thickened this. Now, if I have a feature such as a plane or a thicken where I can't add a global variable, I simply double click on that feature and I have a little dimension that comes up. So I double click on the dimension and now from the modify, I can add a global variable. I simply, I simply type an equal sign, come down to global variables and hit enter on thick. And now I have a, an equation driven thickness. So if I come to my equations, and I say 0.0625, I want to change it to say 0.2 and make it really thick. I change my thickness based on how I change my variable. So I have an automatically updating model uh, whenever I change that variable. So let's go again on the top plane. I'm going to create a sketch and let me type in curve here and we'll go to equation driven curve and from here we'll go parametric and I'll say something like 0.125 times t times sine of t and down here I'm going to say 0.125 times t times cosine of t and I'll go from 1 to say 48 and I've created a curve but I want this curve to follow my profile and notice I did 6 by 4 and so I can add in a very simple multiplier down here and say times 6 fourths to um, sort of identify this ratio that I have of 6 by 4 and when I hit enter I have to let it think for a moment. And there I have more of a profile that's matching um, my surface. So let's fine tune this and say something like 0 0.05 so the curve is a lot more tight. Again, SolidWorks has to think because the screen recording is using a lot of processor in addition to SolidWorks, so it has to take a second to work out. And I'll uh, go by the same ratio down here of 05, and that should help uh, match my my uh, profile. Excellent. Uh, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take down and go to something like, let's see how 39 looks, and that looks pretty good. So we'll choose that curve, and now I'll say insert curve. Oh, but I have to rebuild. So we're going to project this curve onto this face so that all the holes will be normal to the face. If I do a cut and extrude and try to pattern it, all the holes will be in one direction instead of normal to the face. So using a projected curve will help us solve that problem. And to do that, I'll say insert, curve, projected, grab this curve and grab this face. And notice the curve is now projected onto the face of my part. So with this projected curve, I can uh, begin making the feature that I want to pattern. I'll choose the top plane. And again, this is another part where I want to add in a global variable. So manage equations, and I'll say hole diameter. And I'll make this 0.125, or an eighth inch thick hole. And sketching on the top plane, I can draw a circle. And when I go to smart dimension my circle, I can simply say equals global variables hole diameter. And now my hole snaps to the diameter that I have specified in my global variable. I can extrude cut, features, extrude a cut, and through all. I have to flip the side. And now we have a single cut. So now I want to pattern this hole all down this curve. But I need to know what volume should I uh, want my holes to add up to. So I'll add another variable, needed volume. And we'll say we want to fill two square inches. 
My units may be off, but that's okay because the equations will still work out. So we'll say volume, all poles must equal, I should say area, flow area, and then I can say number of holes needed. That's a very long name for a variable, but it will work. And to do that, I, I need to take my needed volume divided by my whole area. And since I don't have my whole area, I can even um, add in another equation, or I can, I can nest that area equation in here, but to make it simple, I'll say whole area, which of course is pi r squared. So to get the radius, we'll say global variable whole diameter divided by 2. So we're taking whatever we specify up here and dividing it by 2 to get the radius. And we'll do a multiplication sign times open parenthesis whole diameter divided by 2. So we're multiplying half the whole diameter twice. That's our r squared times. And then for pi, I just write pi in capitals. And that is the area of a single hole. Now, I can say number of holes needed. Again, that's a very long name, but it'll work. And we can say um, the needed volume divided by the whole area, right? The total divided by the single equals how many I need. So I need 162.975 holes. Because we can't make 0.975 holes. I mean, I, I, if we worked long enough, maybe we could. But for our needs, that's not that big of a deal. So we'll add a round function and then put whatever we want within the parentheses of the round. And that at, rounds it up from 162.975 to 163, which makes a lot more sense. Total number of holes needed. So now I know how many holes I need because I've calculated my whole area using global variables and equations. So I'll insert a pattern driven by a curve. We'll choose this curve as a direction. And uh, we have equal spacing, which is good. It's put in automatically 50 holes, but let's change that to a global variable of number of holes needed. Uh, finally, what face do we want to be normal to? We want to be normal to this face. And what features do we want to pattern? We want to pattern this feature. And now notice it pre-populates with all of the holes that we need in order to satisfy 0.2 square inches of flow area. It'll take a second to uh, build this feature. And there we've got a sieve that uh, fulfills our needs. I'm going to hide this curve so we can see the sieve more clearly. We'll go equations, and let's say we want to change the volume to 1.5 square inches. I simply hit enter, and with this automatically rebuild box checked, it changes the number of holes to satisfy that demand. I can choose uh, even one square inch, or sorry, 0.1 rather, as a um, hole diameter. A smaller hole diameter means I need to have more holes to fill that. And notice I have more holes. Likewise, if I choose 0.25, which is a large hole, I'll have less holes to fulfill that needed volume of 1.5 square inches. So I can specify three and get more holes. It's fun to play with this because you can see just how much time it saves you and how much math you don't have to do in order to fulfill your needs. Okay, so let's say I want to change um, something. Let's say I want to add a global variable called height that would uh, reference the curvature of my sieve. Well, if I add something like 4.5, now I can go back to this sketch, sketch 2. And I can say equals and add a global variable of height. And notice my curvature changes. I can rebuild. So you can add global variables at any time, roll back, and add them in. And now I have the flexibility to say I want my height to be 5. And notice how the curvature updates 
I can go back to maybe 3.75 and my curvature updates again. Uh, so I can add these global variables, but notice now I've got entry, 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 equation, equation, and entry. And it's kind of messy to have to step around equations, and I may want to change the order of my uh, global variables. Well, I don't seem to be able to do that. So the way that I do that is I first unclick automatic solve order. Then I come to this view, ordered view. And now I can change, I can take this height, and I can move it up into some uh, an area that makes a lot more sense. And I can take something that isn't an entry and move it down. Now I can go back to my equation view and have everything ordered nice and neatly. Um, so that's how we can change the order. Again, uh, anytime I use smart dimension, I simply uh, write equals and it adds a dimension. But if I were to use a plane, something like adding a plane, like reference geometry, plane, and I'll, I'll reference my plane off of my top plane, and notice I've got a certain distance of 0.8. If I say equals, there is no global variable that comes up, so I have to put a number. So I'll add 0 0.08. So if I want to use a global variable to drive the location of this plane, I double click on the plane, and I double click on that blue equation that comes up, and here's the number that I entered, and I can add in my global variable from here and I'm just adding an arbitrary global variable. And then I rebuild and my plane updates to that location and will update because it's linked to that global variable. So that's uh, an overview on how you deal with global variables and equations in SOLIDWORKS. Um, again, extremely, extremely useful because instead of doing the math to figure out how many holes I need, if I were to change my hole diameter to 0 0.1, I simply click come here, 0 0.1 and SOLIDWORKS does the math for me. So it's a lot uh, less painful to do the math once in SOLIDWORKS than to do it every time you have a change. And that's why equations and global variables are so extremely useful. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. See you then.